قد أفلح المؤمنون الذين هم في صلاتهم خاشعون. So now let's start to implement some of the principles that we have been discussing and the techniques that we've been talking about that will help us unlock a truly meaningful and purposeful prayer. I want you to think about, with respect to any salah, the very first time that it occurs to you that now I need to pray. I'm not talking about in general when you think about prayer as a general obligation and something that you, uh, you have to do and you want to do. I'm just talking about the fact that, for example, uh, it's coming up to lunchtime and then something triggers you or reminds you that dhuhr, time, dhuhr prayer needs to be prayed now. Maybe you have a reminder in your phone about the, that the prayer time is coming or you've downloaded an app and the notification comes or someone else at, at home uh, tells you or perhaps you're in the workplace you hear the adhan, whatever it is, there's always some prompt that brings us to a closer realization that now is the time for this particular prayer. And so here, what I want you to really think about is that initial mindset. What's the first thought? Most of us, when that moment happens, we don't necessarily take the time to process or to think about how we actually feel about the fact that salah uh, is about to come, that the time has arrived for us to actually offer the prayer. But I just want you to pay more attention to that the next time and the next few times you realize that the time for prayer has come. Because the initial mindset that you have or that initial emotion, you might even call it the gut reaction that you have to the idea of prayer or the time that the time has come now, plays a big role or there'll be a big correlation between that feeling and how the rest of the prayer is likely to uh, evolve or to manifest. So what do I mean by that? We all know the feeling that sometimes we're in the midst of something, we're really busy, perhaps a little bit stressed, and then we realize that the time for salah has come. And we all know that feeling where we feel a little bit of resistance, a bit of friction, a bit frustrated that actually this time is not really suiting me right now. I wish I could pray a little bit later. Or sometimes we actually decide that we're going to defer it to later on. Oh, I've got time, so we push it out a little bit. Now, it may on occasion be reasonable for us to decide that actually, yes, I'm going to wait a little bit, get something done, completed, and then to offer the prayer. That can be reasonable and a, sometimes a sensible thing to do at certain times. But that feeling of resistance or frustration or almost as if, you know, I wish I didn't really have to do this is something that's very important to be aware of so that we can tackle it. On the other side, of course, we can feel much more positive emotions or reactions we can feel relief. In fact, there is a famous narration in which we know that the Prophet wasallam, may God grant him blessings and peace, invited his companion Bilal to call the adhan, the call to prayer, by telling him, arihna, arihna bi salah, give us rest, give us relaxation in the prayer. So his way of actually asking Bilal to call the adhan and to initiate the process of salah for the community of the believers was to say that now the time has come for us to find our relief, our rest, our relaxation. Uh, the word raha in Arabic actually comes from the same word as rih, like a wind or a breeze. And then we also know that the Prophet wasallam, may God grant him blessings and peace, would say sometimes, salah, that my greatest delight has been placed in the prayer. So if someone has that kind of attitude, then they will actually look forward to this meeting, this interaction because they have things in perspective. And this is one of the powerful things about Salah. It puts things into perspective. Actually, if you're feeling frustrated, stressed, you're busy, you're in the middle of something that's causing you difficulty potentially, sometimes the first thing that you should do is take a break and actually go to your prayer. Maybe in the prayer, you'll find that guidance. You'll find that recalibration of perspective. You, you'll be, feel a bit reoriented, a bit balanced, a bit centered. Salah has this capability that wherever you are, it centers you once again. And so this is something which is very important for us to think about. Now, sometimes we can have then these negative feelings and reactions, or we can have positive ones. But actually, you know what? For many of us, we don't feel particularly negatively about Salah, but we're not feeling particularly positive either. We're kind of conscientiously praying and offering our prayers. We are committed, perhaps, that we pray regularly, we pray five times a day. And so it almost becomes a bit of a neutral event, neither here nor there. Even that is something worth us being aware of so that we can, uh, we can tackle it. We can actually think about how we can bring those initial emotions to a more positive space. So what I suggest to you is this, practically speaking, is that when that time comes, think about how do you really feel. Be honest with yourself. 
And then the way to deal with that or to move your emotions to a more positive place is to think about your Lord, His Majesty, His Grandeur. And very specifically, I think the number one tip here is to think about your blessings. Think about your blessings. Because I find that deep gratitude brings a keenness to offer our prayers. Especially, you know, in the winter times or when the time comes when salah, one salah comes after the other. And then we feel, well, I just offered a prayer. Now an hour has passed, maybe an hour and a half, couple of hours, and now the time for another prayer has come. Sometimes I say to myself and I say to others, you know what? If you feel that resistance to doing your salah, just look at your hand. Just look at your hand. And in the last hour, last hour and a half, think about the usages that you have made of these, of your fingers, of your hand. Just a single blessing of your one hand with all its intricacies and all its usefulness and all its benefits and blessings for us is enough to motivate us to get up again for five, ten minutes and offer our gratitude. Don't take your Lord for granted. Don't take your blessings for granted. Realize the deep opportunity that there is in your salah and realize that when you prioritize your salah and you prioritize your meeting with your Lord, He will, if you like, prioritize you. He will settle your affairs and grant you a peace and tranquility in your heart, which frankly can't be found anywhere else but in the Salah and in the relationship with our Lord.